I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the Manor House on behalf of Victoria and Paul. Um, it's been a wonderful day. Uh, I, I might be biased, but I thought you looked stunning. Before I begin my short speech, please can I introduce you all to my wife, Mrs Victoria Whitaker. Steve, thank you for your kind words and your uh, welcome into the Lambert family. Like most fathers on their daughter's wedding day, it's a sad day for Steve, but not entirely in the way that you would imagine. I'm now officially the most talented sports person in the family. Steve, Steve drops to number three, <laughs> behind myself and Trish. Um, in, in case any of you are wondering, uh, I'm, I'm Rich and this is Chris and we are very glad to be the best men at, better work, wedding of the year 2018 everyone. Uh, no expense spared with our, our presentation skills. Um, on behalf of both of us, we'd just like to say how absolutely honoured we are to be the best men today. Um, it's really testament to friendships that have endured for over 30 years. Um, either that or it's testament to the fact that Paul's failed to find a new friend in the last 30 years. And uh, I'd also like to thank you all for, for coming today for what and sharing in what is a, a, a wonderful occasion, a wonderful setting. Uh, I think you all agree with me on just how delightful Vicky looks uh, today on her wedding day. Okay, so a question for you. What does Paul Whitaker have in common with the cricketer Kevin Peterson, uh, the Duke of Beaufort, and actor Jamie Dornan? <laughs> so what do they have in common? What does KP have in common with uh, the Duke and Jamie Dornan? Any idea? Well, they were all married at this wonderful location, the Manor House, and what a beautiful setting it is. Um, KP married uh, his Liberty X, uh, wife Jessica Taylor in front of a star-studded audience. Looking at you lot, the venue is the only thing that's uh, <laughs> that's similar. Uh, the Duke married the Duchess. The Duke is the owner of Babington House, who lives just down the road uh, where the Babington horse trials are, are held. And Jamie Dornan married his wife Amelia uh, Warner. He actually lived uh, in Western but uh, not, not too long. So I came across these interesting facts when researching my speech. And then it suddenly dawned on me, I'm saying the same words I'm saying Paul Whitaker in the same sentence as an international cricketer, a duke, and a Hollywood actor worth about 12 million. Jesus, the bathroom and wet, wet rooms business must be doing well. In my younger days, I met girlfriend's parents who in some cases, particularly the father, could be extremely difficult. And I made a, view, a vow that if I had daughters, I would always welcome the boyfriends, whatever the circumstances. And I have to say, present company accepted. You did test my patience, you two. <laughs> Paul and Victoria have been together for more than eight years. Yeah? And it's been interesting to see the relationship grow. They used to visit us in Cyprus. We're often at home in Ross as well for Sunday lunch. The lunch invariably ended in confrontation. <laughs> Almost exclusively started by Victoria. I remember one particularly, particular incident, which Daisy should as well. Victoria stormed off from the table because Paul was sat too close to her. <laughs> Daisy got up, followed her mother elsewhere to calm her down. And Daisy's granddad poured himself a very large brandy and went to a bit quieter. Anyway, things changed. We remember Trish and I coming down to Torquay for a New Year 2016 event, and it was plain to see that Paul, Victoria, Lily, Michael and Daisy had become a family. And that's what you all see here today. Can I please start by asking who brings Victoria to be married to Paul today? I do. Thank you very much. Steve. I'd like to take a seat, lovely. Thank you. 
I don't normally sweat the small stuff, but when Vicky and I started dating, it was actually nine years ago, Steve, it, it wasn't... It, 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 <laughs> it, it, it wasn't long, it wasn't long before she wanted to show me off to the family. I thought I'd better do my research, so I jumped online. I noticed he was sometimes getting quoted by the BBC News website. A.G. Leventis Lecturer in Eastern Christianity. Research interests. Late Antiquity and Byzantium, the late Roman, late Sasanian and early Islamic history of the 6th and 7th century East. Middle Byzantine Christianity, histiographic, hadiographic and theological texts in several traditions, especially Greek, Coptic, Ethiopic, and Arabic. <laughs> Christ, I thought, I hope I don't get sat next to him. Okay? That is one long evening right there. <laughs> I knew Vicky's lovely sister, Emma, had met Booth at Cambridge University from their days together at their halls of residence. Apparently, Phil had been Emma's father in Emma's first year at Ch Churchill College. Apparently, Cambridge University have this um, family terminology as their mentoring system. Must be someone from the Forest of Dean that's made that up or something. I don't, I don't quite know. However, it can all go pear-shaped. Okay, it can all go pear-shaped and get a bit disturbing when rumour got round, word got round campus that Emma was sleeping with her dad. <laughs> uh, with Vicky also a straight-A student, which, uh, which uh, obviously Steve has uh, alluded to, I was beginning to flap about this Lambert family meal. I was clearly in the big league, out of my debt, and nowhere to hide. Step forward, the mother of the bride. I was saved. Trish was a teacher, and not just any old teacher, a PE teacher. I no longer felt inadequate. Dinner was a delight, and I was able to relax pretty quickly, helped by Trish's query on what part of Spain was Portugal in. That's true. It's a true story. It's a true story. It's a true story. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Paul, do take the Victoria to be my lawful wedded wife. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Victoria, do take the Paul to be my lawful wedded husband. It's a very sad story, it's a very, very personal story, which I've never told before, actually, never told before. Um, yeah. I remember his communication skills in a slightly different, different form, in a different way, and it brings back memories, painful memories, actually, of, of, being, of being 15. And our school just started to admit girls, and uh, in many ways they were completely alien to me, and, uh, and in many ways still are. Uh, but, um, but as we've heard already, not to Paul, who was, who, yeah. And, uh, and so he had great sympathy with my plot. I just get very embarrassed in front of girls at that age and, and I, I didn't know really what to say to them. And, and Paul, Paul offered to help me out. And, uh, and he had great sympathy for me. So he said, no, just, just, just tell me, who, who is it you fancy at school? Who is it? And I'll, and I'll help you out. And I, said, and I wouldn't, and I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't tell him, I wouldn't tell him. And he badgered me so much that one day I told him. And I said, it was the, the delightful Karen Thompson. 
Karen Thompson, yeah, lovely girl. I wonder where she is now, Paul. <laughs> and in, a minst in an instant when I said, said her name, the glint in his eye suggested that I'd made a big, big error. Like a lion seeing a stranded antelope, quick as a flash, he was gone. Uh, the news of my now infatuation with Karen Thompson had broken around the school, and I reckon within two minutes, everyone knew exactly who it was I fancied. I don't think I could ever bring myself to speak to Karen Thompson again. Such was my embarrassment, and whilst I think of what might have been, and that lost love, I reckon I probably forgave him by the end of the week, because there's probably a rugby match to play, or something like that. The great communicator, Paul Whitaker. Victoria with this ring. I promise to love and cherish you. I promise to love and cherish you. Comfort and care for you. Comfort and care for you. Honour and protect you. Honour and protect you. <laughs> Throughout our lives together. Throughout our lives together. And now, if you'd like to give Victoria Paul's ring. Paul, I give you this ring as a symbol of our marriage. As symbol of our marriage. And as a sign of my solemn promise. And as a sign of my solemn promise. To show you love, loyalty, and respect. To show you love, loyalty, and respect. I promise to be faithful. I promise to be faithful. Both in good times and bad. In both good times and bad. Throughout our life together. Throughout our life together. <laughs> <laughs> Big fingers. Victoria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you now like to turn and face me and hold hands. <laughs> Paul and Victoria, you have both made the declarations prescribed by law and have made a solemn and binding contract with one another in the presence of your witnesses, family and friends gathered here today. And it now gives me very great pleasure to tell you that you are husband and wife. Very many congratulations to you both. Paul, you may now kiss your bride. Now, after all that, I turn my attention to the star attraction, Mrs. Whitaker. Vicky, I am truly, truly blown away by how beautiful you look today. I am incredibly humbled and unbelievably lucky to stand in front of our family and friends as a 41-year-old, balding, tubby bathroom salesperson <laughs> <laughs> with you by my side. <laughs> now is the uh, perfect opportunity to tell you all about Victoria, a.k.a. Vicky. There are two very obvious reasons why I fell in love with Vicky. And, uh... <laughs> Let's not make this smutty. Hey, Spacey, much more than that and you'll be asked to leave. <laughs> Firstly, her fun personality and sense of humour. Vicky is always willing to let her hair down and enjoy herself and ensure those around her do too. Never want to take herself or life too seriously. Uh, this is the main reason why our kids love her so much. She's just great fun to be around. Secondly, she is the most loyal and supportive person you could ever wish to meet. She's been a rock to me uh, these past nine years and has stood by me steadfastly. You can't put a price on loyalty and on many occasions these past nine years, she has metaphorically picked me up and carried me to better times. Vicky is also an awesome mum and stepmum, clearly the coolest mum in the playground, even without the opportunity due to her job, and it's great to see the Lisa Foster clan here to, today who Vicky works for, to turn up at school in the unofficial active wear that so many mums seem to wear. Um, if, Lily and Mickey, if Lily and Michael had shown any uncertainty uh, towards Vicky, we wouldn't be here today. However, they are a hero worshipper, and, uh, and she adores them, as I do Daisy. I'm not really sure Daisy Hero worships me. <laughs> um, Vicky, I love the fact that we have a proper relationship. We laugh, we live, and we occasionally argue. Um, but it's always healthy and it's always fun. And I can't wait to spend the rest of my life together.
Um, and ladies and gentlemen, I introduce for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Whitaker. <laughs> Now I know the years haven't been best to the be uh, good to the best of us, um, but trust me, this bloke was never an oil painting back in the day, um, and it's clear to see that he is boxing well above his weight when marrying Vicky. Um, and there's another team that Whitsy would get into. In fact, I'd name him as captain, and that is the Knob 15. Sorry, kids. Uh, no, this is actually a compliment. So the Knob 15 is always made up. You know those players you hate to play against. They're combative, they're in your face, they're, um, you know, they're overly competitive, they've always got a piece of advice for you in your ear. Um, they're often described as a nightmare to play against, but the first people you'd want in your team. Um, now this couldn't be true of our mate but see, don't get me wrong, you know, he was never the kind of William Wallace type of, uh, of leader, and he would never get out in history as one of the great, uh, great captains. But if there was a situation that I was in, or a team that I'd want to be a part from, um, he'd be in it for me. In fact, this bloke would be the first person on my team sheet every time. In all seriousness, before we, before we, we finally leave the stage, um, thinking, thank God for that. Um, we, Paul's been our friend for, for many years, as, as we've said, and uh, as we know, life is not always straightforward. It's not always uh, a, a bed of roses, but um, I think I can certainly say from my own experience, when, when the chips are down, when you need a friend, Paul has always been there, and we might be times when we don't even speak for, for a number for some time. But then when you come back together, it's exactly as it was when you left him. I think that's the mark of a true friend. And uh, so I'm, I personally, I'm very thankful that I can count um, Paul as one of my best friends, and uh, and I'm sure Chris the same as well. Um, before we do toast the newlyweds, I'd like to leave you with a thought, uh, particularly for, for Paul and Vicky, and it's from the late Audrey Hepburn, who said, "The best thing to hold on onto in life." is each other. Uh, so final toast, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's obviously a beautiful set, uh, setting, a fantastic ceremony, stunning bride. Uh, please be upstanding to toast Paul and Vicky.